Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to do a little bit of gaming. I'm going to compare my base model M4 Mac Mini to my 2019 Mac Pro running a RX 6900 XT, just to kind of look at the reality of how good is the M4 Mini really. I'm sure you boys didn't come all the way out here to roast marshmallows compared to something like the Mac Pro 2019 with a dedicated GPU. You think you're hot stuff, you ain't nothing. So let's get to it. But first, our sponsor, Ewin Gaming Chairs. Check out this gorgeous gaming chair. It has four-way adjustable lumbar support, can support up to 500 pounds capacity, magnetic headrest and magnetic armrest, high quality premium materials with pro-grade ergonomics. It's got that extra pillow for your back, and I love it. It's my new studio chair. It's super firm yet super comfortable and it looks like it belongs in a sports car. I think it's really sweet and you can get 25% off with my discount code. Link in the description. I'm going to do one game, Resident Evil 4, because it's optimized for Apple Silicon. In fact, you cannot even get the Apple version for Intel. You have to run it on Windows, which is what I'm doing on my Mac Pro behind us on my OLED 4K display. So let's just compare the two and see how the Mac Mini stands up. First, we're going to turn on the Metal HUD heads-up display, which adds a real-time overlay to the game while you're playing it. So you can see what performance you're getting, your frames per second, etc. So I'll leave the link telling you more about the heads-up display in the video description. And I'll leave the terminal command in the description as well. So you can just copy paste the text, but it's very simple. You launch terminal and you type MTL underscore HUD underscore enabled equals one space. Make sure you leave a space. Then we're gonna to go to our game in our applications folder and hit show packages by holding the alt key or your secondary mouse button and let up on show packages. And then we're gonna see inside the application and there's the contents. We go inside there. Then we go to Mac OS and inside there is the game's executable file. And we're gonna just drag that over to Terminal. And there's our path telling Terminal that's the game we're gonna launch. So it'll launch the game and display the metal HUD. So we just hit enter on our keyboard now, make sure Terminal's in the front. And there it is, we've got our metal HUD on display now and Apple comes and tells us that game mode is on. So we're ready to start gaming on our Mac Mini. This is on the Mac Mini base model. And the good thing about this method is once you quit the game, it turns off. So you're not gonna always have it on and have to go turn it off again. So now we've got the game running, we're gonna set up the graphics and then see what kind of performance we're getting with our base model Mac Mini. And I'm using the demo, I didn't buy it because I've already purchased it on my Mac Pro using Windows through Steam. But the Mac demo is the same as the purchased Mac version. The Windows version does have more options in the graphics like ray tracing, which the Mac version does not have. And they do have graphic presets. I'm just gonna go with the recommended and then make a couple of changes. I'm gonna turn off the V-Sync and turn off the Metal FX upscaling because we wanna see the true performance of the M4 chip without the upscaling because the Metal FX upscaling will have the game get better frames per second but at a cost of the visuals. So I wanna try it both ways with no upscaling and with Metal FX. And we're gonna try that as well on the Windows version with no upscaling and no frame blending and running it in 4K as well. Now the cutscenes look pretty good and you can see we're getting about 63 frames per second. That's pretty good. We're at 1080p by the way at 60 hertz. So I'm hooked up to a TV to do this demo. Then we're gonna try moving the Mac Mini over to my bigger 4K display. But I just wanted to see, you know, 1080p is probably the sweet spot for the Mac Mini. So as we can see, the game is dropping already. After the cutscene, we're down to 45 frames per second. You know, it's gonna move around from there, but that's about the average frame per second we're gonna get when we don't have the upscaling turned on. The other thing I would do is I would turn on 
V-Sync because otherwise you get some screen tearing. So you might as well have V-Sync turned on to make things smoother when you're not using metal effects upscaling. And now I'm gonna turn on metal effects upscaling and have it in quality mode and we'll see what kind of frames per second boost we get out of that. Okay, so now we're locked at 60 frames per second and that's really where you wanna be. You don't want to be below that too much. And you know, I do have V-Sync turned on. We can try turning that off now so that it can go above 60 frames per second. And look at that, there we are. We're up at like 72, up to 80. That's pretty good. Look at his hair. You have definitely taken a slight notch down and I just point out his hair because that's like the most obvious thing. And what happens when you lower the graphics quality is you lose the three-dimensional aspect of it. When the graphics are super high-end and amazing, things look more real. I just put it in performance mode. Now we're over 100 frames per second. So, and his hair looks blurry now. It almost looks better in a way. But everything else is taking a hit, like the leaves in the forest looks worse. So the reality is, is do you want faster frames per second or do you want better looking graphics? And if you can lock in close to 60 without using metal effects, that's gonna be the best looking game. If you're playing like a high speed shooter, yeah, competitive stuff, you wanna get as fast a frames per second as you can. So let's connect the Mac mini to my OLED 4K display and see if it can even handle running the game at 4K. And I don't want to have any metal effects turned on when I first try it. And I'm doing it over the shoulder this way because I didn't want to do a screen capture with QuickTime, which would affect the frame rate. So we're just doing it straight up. And as you can see, in 4K with no metal effects, I'm down to 18 frames per second on basically the default setting. Not great, so not playable at 4K without metal effects. So we'll try metal effects with quality mode and see how that does. And to my surprise, it didn't change that much. We're still at a pretty unplayable frame rate. It is smoother, because you could see before it was really glitchy, but we're only getting 25 frames per second. Ouch. So just for fun, we'll try 1440p and uh, see if that's playable. So here we are at 1440p with metal effects upscaling on in quality mode. And you know, we're getting 42, 50 frames per second. That's not terrible. So yeah, 1440p seems like you could game with Resident Evil 4 on your Mac mini with quality settings. So that pretty much runs the gamut for the Mac mini. You know, I gotta say though, I've been playing this on the Mac Pro in Windows and it's a night and day difference of the quality of the graphics. Even when you turn off the metal upscaling, the graphics just do not look as good as they do running in Windows at 1080p. They've definitely lightened the load on the basic graphics setting. So let's go over to the Mac Pro now, running Windows, see what kind of FPS we get. Okay, so first we're gonna try it in 1080 on the Mac Pro with the RX 6900 XT. We're gonna have Fidelity FX turned off. That's AMD's version of Metal FX. Basically the same thing, upscaling. And we'll just go back to the first level. So we're sort of in the same area. And as you can see already, our frame rate is way higher. And I'm using AMD Adrenaline to do the screen capture, which definitely knocks, you know, six to 10 frames per second while you're recording. But as you can see, the Mac Mini was getting around 45 to 50 with no upscaling at 1080, and I'm getting about 150 with no upscaling at 1080. And even though they're both 1080, you can tell that the Windows version just looks better. His hair looks better, the trees look better, everything looks better. I'm not sure why it's that different, except that probably the game developers had to scale down the quality of the graphics to make it relatively playable in macOS. 
I mean, honestly, it looks like upscaling is already on, even though it's not in Mac OS, because when you use it in Windows, you have to set the upscaling to high performance to get it to look as bad as it does in Mac OS without any scaling. So I'm not going to bother with fidelity effects for a 1080p. Let's bump it up to 4K now and see what happens to our frame rate. But remember, the Mac Mini was down at about 24 frames per second. So here we are, no upscaling, and we're coming in around 80 FPS. And it goes all over the place. Now we're down to 60. And you can lock this in at 60 FPS at 4K, and it looks pretty dang good. Look at that hair. And for some reason, I always step in these stupid metal traps. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. I hear you, brother. Okay, so let's try turning on Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2 in quality mode. Same idea as Metal FX. It's using upscaling, so it's probably a 1080p picture being upscaled to 4K. And we're getting about 100 frames per second. So, you know, that upscaling does work. Gets you more frames per second. And it looks pretty darn good still. Again, the PC version just looks so much better than the Mac OS version. And now we'll just try performance mode. One last thing to try and see what that gets us. And yeah, we're squeaking out about another 10 frames a second. And it still looks decent. Um, it, it still looks better than Mac OS without any upscaling on. So they're really dithering down the graphics for the metal version for Mac OS. But that being said, when I tried this same game with an M1 Mac Studio, I was pretty surprised at how good the Mac Studio performed. And I'm getting, you know, between 70 and 90 frames per second at 1440p, which is pretty phenomenal. And that definitely smokes the Mac Mini. And this is native resolution. This is not using metal effects. This is no upscaling. You can just tell by looking at his hair. So I'm not trying to poo-poo the Mini at all. It's a great little computer for $600. You can run games on it, albeit probably in 1080p. And, uh, you know, that's a good starting point. And, you know, my Mac Pro originally cost 10 grand, and I feel bad for anybody who bought those when they first came out, because that's a lot of money. I got mine brand new for two grand, and that's still expensive for a computer that's on its way out, but I bought it last March. No regrets. I love it. And, you know, it's going to be my Windows gaming machine, if nothing else. I can throw an NVIDIA 4090 in there if I wanted to. The Mini absolutely crushes the Mac Pro in single-core performance and is almost as fast in multi-core, which is insane. But that win, thankfully, goes to the Mac Pro. And the Mini's GPU just cannot compete with the RX 6900 XT, which is a four-year-old GPU and not that competitive nowadays, but it's still a pretty good GPU. And it has 16 gigs of dedicated VRAM, unlike the Mini that has 16 gigs of unified memory, which is shared between all the processes, not just the GPU. But of course, the RX 6900 XT cost more than the Mini did when it first came out. You think you're hot stuff. You ain't nothing. I'm the new mini, and I'll outperform you any day, you big old turd. Yeah, you were expensive in your day, but now you're nothing. You're worthless. You're weak. You're worthless and you're weak. And I am the new mini. You're nothing but an old piece of junk. Cheese it. What? All right, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.